So when we run it, we see that the keys or the values of the hash map have been printed out, and we can see there is actually 21 in our student hash map. So let us do something before we continue. Assuming there is another student called me, but they have different first names, and we want to insert such a student in the hash map. And we put it there, we start the student page. And we type the name. We type me again. And the second me is let's say 25 years old. So when we do this, what happens? If we run it, we would realize that when we printed the content of the student age map, we have um, Evelyn 21 and me is now 25. The reason is we remember from the theory, hash maps do not allow duplicated keys. So because we've inserted me twice, the same key, the second insertion will overwrite the content of the first name. So if there are two students in the class and they are both called name, we need to differentiate. So that assuming we now add me, um, the second, and we run it, we would see that there would be two needs in the class and they would have their respective needs. So when we run it again, we can see we have the second knee with 25 and the first knee with 38. So we should be careful when we are adding content to our hash map. If we try to add duplicated keys, it will simply overwrite initial content that was there. So we've been able to add content to our hash maps. We've learned how we can print content out of our hash maps. We've used some methods in our hash maps and how we can access them. We will now look at how we would be able to access content in our hash maps using the for loop or what they refer to as the map entry. So we would see how that goes. So we want to access content in HashMap using for loop. For us to be able to access the content in HashMap using the for loop, we need to iterate through each entry in the HashMap. And for us to do that, we need the map entry interface, which will enable us iterate through each entry, each key value pair, to be able to access them using the for loop. So over here, we are looking at employing the map entry interface. So let's start with our for loop, and we see the steps that are involved to iterate through using the map entry. So we can iterate through entry by entry, that is key value pair, by using the map dot entry. So when we are using the map dot entry, it prevents us from importing the entry utility. If we don't use the map dot and we'll type start with the entry, it means we need to import the entry utility to enable us iterate through entry by entry. So depending on the map we are dealing with, we need to specify the key and the value of that map. So if we are iterating through the student age map, the key is a string and the value is an integer. So we just replace them string and the value we replace it with an integer. So when we are iterating through the hash map entry by entry, that is the key value pair, we need to give each entry that we pick from the hash map a name so that from the name we can now access the key or the value in that entry. So because we are looking through student each map, we will give it the entry name 
let's call it student age entry. So for each one we pick, we are looking at the student age entry inside the student age map. So we tell the for loop, we are looking inside the student age map. So student age, inside the student age map, we just want you to get the entry set. So we pick the entry set and we are done. So this will ensure that whenever it's looping, you go for key value pair, one key value pair, and that key value pair will be assigned a name, student entry. So we can now use the student entry to access the content in each um, entry that is with regards to the key or the value. So inside our for loop, we can now print out what key or what value is in each entry. So we just say system.out print line. When you pick an entry, which is student each entry, so we want you to print out the key. So we can say student each entry dot get key. And this will print out each key in each entry. So let's just add the text to it and say key and we finish it up. Now we can also print out the value for each entry. We copy and paste and we just change this to value. So instead of get key, we want to get the value. So we are done. This should print for each entry. It will print the entry key and it will print the entry value for us. So we can do the same thing for the student all map. But here we want to use the entry without the map dot entry. So I'm going to copy this for loop and paste it and I will edit it to iterate through the student all map and we would see what happens. So over here, instead of using the map dot entry, I'm just going to use entry and here I will change from student age to student hall and um, I would change this one to the student call entry and um, we can see there is an underline so there is an error the, first of all we've not imported the entry utility so we import it now the student hall entry is taking key as string and value as string. So we need to change this from integer to string and the first error would go. Now we also need to change the names. So we are calling each entry student call entry. So we just copy that and replace them with these and our errors should go. So let us say we add print out to show that this is content from the student age map and to also show that that's the second for loop is the content from the student call map. So we are printing out content from student age map and the next one we are printing out the content entry by entry content from the student format. So let's run it and see what happens. So let me expand this. So we can see content from the student page map. The first key is Evelyn. The first value is 21. So the entry set is Evelyn 21 and we've been able to access just the key and just the value. So the second key is knee. Second knee, the value it does that it brings them out for us. And if we go to the student hall map as well, it has the printout. Each key and its corresponding value. 
So that is how we would be able to access the content of a hatch map using the for loop and the map dot entry interface. So we should understand that if we are not using the map dot entry, we need to import the entry utility. So I wrote these two differently, so we could see that in either case it will work. By using the map dot entry, we will not import the entry utility. But if we are not using the map dot entry, we need to import the entry utility. So that is what we are supposed to know. We would now go to our complicated articles where we would see how we can create a hatch map with string as a key and an array list as the values. 